everyone welcome to this updates video i really hope you're doing fantastic now today on the 22nd of february makes it 100 days to the official start of hurricane season and it is not looking too good ahead and i'll be talking more about that later down in the video i'll be revisiting forecasts and i'll also be giving my forecast for the hurricane season but for now we've got that frontal system still in the vicinity of the caribbean we can see it out there the bulk of the activity remains offshore though but as we zoom in here we can still see some of these cloud clusters moving through bringing uh, bringing some showers to parts of the lesser antilles the areas such as antigua barbuda the virgin islands and even puerto rico as well but this will continue making its way out and uh, over in the west though things are a bit more the quiet and the cool side especially in the late nights and the early mornings very cool temperatures uh, because of that cool air which has set in behind that frontal boundary Looking at the rainfall forecast for today, here we can see that it gets a little bit more colorful within the vicinity of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. So there may be some additional downpours today. Also for the Leeward Islands, which includes Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Bartholomew, Antigua, Barbuda, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, Seba, St. Eustatius, and even towards Guadeloupe, but elsewhere may experience some passing showers at the most. And it's a similar story for Venezuela as well as the Guyanas and ABC Islands. Up toward uh, Hispaniola, a few showers are possible within the area, but things will be on the drier side for uh, the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, also for Jamaica. For the most part, some showers may move by here and there, but today is likely to be mostly sunny. Also for Cuba, the Cayman Islands, and over into most of the Central American territories. But uh, down in Costa Rica, Panama may be a little bit more active as well as parts of northern Colombia. In terms of the winds, though, uh, it may be a little bit windy across parts of the Bahamas and other sections of the Northern Caribbean, such as Cuba, even Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, uh, and those winds are coming out of the north. So this is a forecast for later this morning. And uh, across some areas, it may be pretty tranquil, such as the ABC Islands as it relates to the wind activity. And then as I said, that cooler air has set in. So this morning is very chilly for most of us in parts of the North Caribbean, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, even over toward uh, Hispaniola as well, the Bahamas over in Central America, cooler than normal temperatures. And this is going to be persistent through the rest of the week. This is a forecast for tomorrow on Friday and then eventually to the weekend. But another frontal system is going to be making its way out of the U.S. to help to reinforce some of that coolness across uh, parts of the northern Caribbean, Bahamas, Florida. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are now 100 days away from the official start of the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. And so this season may be yet another one for the record books. Signs are definitely pointing towards seeing a very, very active 2024 hurricane season. Now there is only one official prediction out that's from the tropical storm risk. Let's take a look at it. It was back in December. It's usually right after the end of a uh, hurricane season when the tropical storm risk releases their first prediction for the next hurricane season so this was back on december 11th and we can see here that at the time they were expecting 20 named storms of which nine could become hurricanes and four major hurricanes and so usually with these early predictions we don't see such numbers expected in terms of the amount of storms hurricanes and majors that we could have but it seems as though uh, the upcoming forecasts aren't going to be backing down much from this because of the sea surface temperatures. That was the reason last season was so active despite being an El Nino season. And I'll talk more about La Nina in a moment. So this is an anomaly map here. These orange and red areas indicate above average sea surface temperatures and we can see that pretty much across the entirety of the Atlantic with a few spots especially offshore of the U.S. because of those fronts making their way out but overall temperatures are above average and especially in the main development region in offshore Africa uh, once the environmental conditions are favorable we could see storms spinning up in no time after these tropical waves make their way off the African coast and with a La Nina and with a uh, strong or dominant area of high pressure which usually steers these systems then we could see a more westward track into the Caribbean as well so because of El Nino the a lot of troughing going on across the U.S. The area of high pressure, the uh, Bermuda Azores High, wasn't so dominant last hurricane season. Hence, we had a lot of systems curving out, thankfully, 
but we may not be so lucky this year. So again, those temperatures well on their way. And uh, with the La Nina influence, let's go to that right now. So usually La Nina is a cooling phase of parts of the eastern and central equatorial Pacific. That's usually when the trade winds may be a bit stronger within the area displaces uh, all the warm water further to the west. So cooler water from further beneath comes up, which is known as upwelling. And those cooler waters will actually influence what happens across the world. So in terms of hurricane season, there isn't as much thunderstorm activity bubbling up over in the Pacific to help to increase the wind shear, which then may limit tropical cyclone activity in the Atlantic Basin. So what happens is that there's reduced uh, strong upper level winds. And as a result, that is going to play a key role in what happens this hurricane season, because if there's not a whole lot of wind shear to rip these systems apart, they're only going to take advantage of the above average temperatures which are already there across the Atlantic. And as I mentioned in a previous video, the current temperatures out there is what we would see June or even in July. So it is just not looking good ahead for the hurricane season. But there is one factor that will also help to influence activity, and uh, that is the Saharan air layer. If there is not too much dust, then yeah, we could definitely see a lot of activity, storm behind storm, hurricane behind hurricane, especially in the heart of the hurricane season. But a lot of Saharan dust and dry air makes conditions a little bit more hostile for these tropical waves to develop. So that's definitely going to be something that we should pay attention to as well. And I also want to address something that I see a lot. So uh, many persons would think that we're just saying the same things every year. But in reality, the seasons have been active. We have had the 2023 hurricane season being an El Nino season, producing a lot of activity, more activity than it should, again, because of the above average temperatures. 2022 was more of an average hurricane season, even though uh, it, was an, uh, it was a La Nina season and the temperatures were definitely warm. Because of the plethora of dust, we didn't see much development out there. 2021, very active. 21 named storms. 2020 currently holds the record for the most named storms ever in an Atlantic hurricane season. But a lot of persons would think that it's specific to their area. If they don't get a storm, the season wasn't active. But that is not the case, guys. It doesn't matter whether or not you get a storm, even if you're in the Caribbean. It's a good thing that your area is spared, but there are other areas out there, other countries which suffer loss whenever there are impacts. And based on how it is looking for this hurricane season, the Caribbean may not be so lucky. And we'll have a better picture of what exactly is going to be happening or if confidence is going to continue increasing over the next few months, but I'll be keeping you posted. That said, this is my forecast as of now for the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. I'm expecting 18 to 25 named storms, of which 10 to 13 could become hurricanes, and 5 to 7 major hurricanes. And a major hurricane is cat 3, 4, or 5. And uh, the reason I'm expecting that many potential major hurricanes is because of, again, the very warm waters out there. And we saw, I'll always go back to Otis of last year, uh, from the eastern Pacific, it jumped from a tropical storm to a Cat 5 in no time, and uh, it struck Mexico. That is the power of having that little warm area, that little eddy of those very, very warm sea surface temperatures. It's a fuel. It's fuel to the fire. And I don't think that we won't see something similar this hurricane season. I think it's very much possible. But the most that we can do is really just to prepare, guys. Uh, the hurricane season is coming up. And usually uh, we'll hear more about hurricane preparedness. I believe that is the first week in May. Uh, so, of course, I'll be talking more about it. I'm here to keep you guys posted. And once we start seeing things ramp up, then I will be including my dual updates where I do an update video in the morning and in the evening to ensure that I keep you guys posted as best as possible. So that is what I wanted to share with you in this update video. It's been a bit lengthy, but I hope that you found it to be quite informative. However... If you have any questions, do feel free to leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there. I'll respond when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.